Today we're looking at the Magellan Explorist 510 GPS unit. This is a handy little tool for anyone who goes out into the backcountry. On top of the unit we have a power button. There are no buttons around it so it doesn't accidentally get pressed. On the side of the unit are two hard buttons. We have a waypoint button. This is easy for marking waypoints on the go. And also a button which activates the camera function on the GPS unit. On the back of the GPS we see a camera, a speaker, there's also a turning lock which opens up the battery compartment of the GPS. Now beneath the batteries there is a slot for an expandable memory chip. The expandable memory chip does not come with the GPS unit and needs to be purchased separately from it. At the bottom of the GPS is a USB port. There is also an attachment point, so you can clip a lanyard or a carabiner on top. There's a microphone and a 3 inch touch screen which makes navigation easy within the GPS unit. When you boot up the GPS unit you see the map screen here which has a zoom feature, you can zoom in and out with the plus and minus key. There's also in the bottom two display boxes. Currently it's set to speed and bearing but I can change these very easily just by clicking on one and a bunch of different options of data that I can have displayed in those boxes in place of what I had currently. When I touch on the map screen I get four menu options, one in each corner. I have the one touch menu, the dashboard menu, the main menu, and an options menu. To get to the one touch menu from the map screen, I click anywhere on the map screen and click the menu icon in the upper right hand corner. This is the one touch menu. This is very handy for easily accessing favorite features within the GPS unit. You can customize up to 12 different shortcuts to your favorite features. I currently only have six set, so I can I still have room for six more. You can change these at any time. This is very handy for me because I can quickly and easily find things such as my car location. The car one is the one in the upper right hand corner here. Now whenever I pull into a new trailhead, I want to reset my car location to that trailhead's location. So to do this, I simply hit the edit screen and click car. It will ask if I want to reassign to current location. I click yes. And that current car location will be assigned to that. So to get back to that, all I have to do is click on car and hit the go button up here in the corner. To get back to the map menu, I click on the back button. Let's go ahead and look at the main menu now. To get to the main menu, I click anywhere on the map screen and click on the lower left hand corner icon. This pulls up the main menu. The main menu has a number of cool features and for a more detailed description, I recommend going to OceanMountainSky.com and reading our report on it. I also recommend trying to get a hold of one of these GPS's in a store such as REI and maybe having a look and seeing if you like the GPS unit for yourself. Now on the main menu, let's go ahead and have a look at some of them. You can start a tract. You can mark waypoints or go to the list of waypoints. You can look at your tracks, old and current. When I click on the geocache button, it, it will pull up a number of geocaches near my location. The Explorers 510 features paperless geocaching, which is a great feature for all you geocachers out there. You have a thousand, a thousand geocaches already built into the unit, but you can upload more. The unit does support uh, GPX files. So, 
Now what I like about uh, the geocaching is it doesn't just look, give you GPS coordinates of the geocache. When I select a geocache, let's go ahead and click one, you can have a number of features here including the distance to the geocache from your current location, the elevation change, both uh, descent and ascent, and the bearing from your current location to the geocache. You can also have shortcuts to go and look at it on the map. There's also usually a description of the geocache, which you can get, and recent logs by others. Some of them have hints. Up here there's also a terrain and difficulty rating as well as the size of the cache. Virtually all the standard information you'd want to know if you're geocaching. Another handy feature on the main menu is the media icon. I'm going to click that now. This allows me easy access to the camera, the voice recorder, and the video recorder on the GPS unit. I can either take pictures, make an audio recording, or record video, or I can also view videos I've recorded, pictures I've taken, or listen to audio that I've recorded. There are also points of interest on the main menu. And you can search by name, cities, land use, transportation, and water. All handy features to have in the backcountry. Let's go ahead and look at the dashboard menu now. To get to the dashboard menu, I touch on the map screen and click on the upper left hand corner icon. This is the dashboard menu. Really handy in navigation. It displays a bunch of data. I can change most of this by clicking on the display boxes. I can also change if I don't want this data displayed I can also change what is displayed on the dashboard menu by clicking on the lower middle section down here and I have a bunch of different options here. Now to learn more about these options and to see what they look like, I highly recommend again going to our report on OceanMountainSky.com. Um, just to give you a, a, a small taste, let's look at uh, satellite. So I can click on satellite. I can go back and now from the map menu, when I go to the dashboard menu, I actually will see the satellite page. To change this again, I need to click on the lower middle and change it to whatever icon I want. This time let's go to compass. Again, very useful to have in the backcountry. There are a number of options of what you want displayed in the dashboard menu and it's really just going to depend on each user what they want to see. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the options menu. To get to the options menu, I touch on the map screen and go to the bottom right hand corner. This brings up a number of options including add a waypoint, uh, start new track, backtrack, search nearby, track summary, a bunch of little handy features. To mark a waypoint on the Magellan 510 Explorers is very easy. I can simply click the hard button, the top hard button here on it. Now it pulls up a menu and I have a bunch of options to customize this waypoint. I can name it for starters. I'm gonna go ahead and just save it right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture from this waypoint. To take a picture I push the hard button on the bottom with the camera imprinted on it. So when I press that, it will pull up a viewfinder. 
Now I can zoom in or out with the plus or minus feature. Now to actually take the picture, I push the camera icon in the bottom middle of the screen. Now to save this picture to that waypoint that I just marked, I click the options button in the bottom right hand corner and I can attach it to waypoint. And that's how easy it is to mark a waypoint, take a picture, and attach the picture to the waypoint.